I'm Malcolm Van Delst, and this is an excerpt from Do the Wrong Thing, a book series or extra long novel that opens with a woman trying to kill herself. She says, I don't know why I tried to do this, and by way of explanation, tells her life story. We are in book two. Previously in Do the Wrong Thing, Ava, obsessed about the size of her waist, quit church, was pursued by a professor, and could barely get out of bed due to extreme dieting and bulimia. This week is basically the same as last week. That's why I've given the, the preamble from the week before because I've edited the summer jobs chapter in response to last week's comments and continued to the end of the chapter. And I'll put my questions at the end. Summer jobs. So here we are, summer 1982. The old woman beams, eyes full of adoration and tenderness as she hands me keys. She wouldn't do either if she could see inside my head. I'm exhausted. I froze during every one of my finals. If I'm lucky, I'll get Bs. Mom and dad helped me move my few things. My new place already has furniture, plates, cooking utensils, bedding, and towels. It really is a basement in a suburban house. Fridge, stove, and kitchen sink added entrance around the back. It would have been a lot easier to stay in Birmingham for the summer. It's not like I'll be going to Dardanelle on the weekends. Why did I move here to Arbor? Just lie, my landlady says. What is it about French Canadians that make them love you so much? And she presents lying as if it's the same thing as buying groceries at the supermarket. She's definitely Catholic. You can see the crucifixes on the walls in her kitchen and living room from her front door. What about God? What about sinning? I've always gotten jobs from people I know. Even the day camp counselor one came from Mike, but here in Arbor, there's no one to give me work. I follow my landlady's advice and add a fake entry to my resume. Country kitchen, waitress, September 1977 to June 1979, part-time. I quake and look up at my ceiling, her floor. Is God watching? I bring this forged covenant to a bunch of restaurants who'd advertised in the help wanted section of the Arbor Sentinel. One of them is hard to get to. Behind the mall, Sandra and I used to go for school and Christmas shopping. I transfer to a bus that doubles back the way I came. Bunny hops across a crowded freeway to reach a steep off-ramp lined on the left with a two-story cement wall, then trawls through a sedated maze of suburban homes. We pass a strip mall beside a park. An opening soon sign flutters across the front of a bistro facade. Inside, a platinum blonde caked in makeup looks me up and down. Oh, Bob will love you, she exclaims. You're just his type. She barely glances at my New Testament. Someone will call you in a week, she says. Bob is short, Italian looking with a graying mullet, acid watch jeans and a t-shirt with three quarter length sleeves and numbers on it. He doesn't seem to love me. Neither do the customers. I know I'm supposed to smile and be friendly. I could do it if I wasn't so nervous. I watch the other waitresses laugh and flirt. Bob likes them. By my sixth shift, the platinum blonde barely looks at me. On my seventh, she tells me I'm no longer needed. My next fabrication is easier though. Along with Country Kitchen, I add Willikers to my resume, spinning up seven days of part-time work to two months full-time. A small, dark, family-run pizza parlor, much closer to my house, takes me in. At the parlor, Fred, I have to say it, it's true, even if it's not flattering, a morbidly obese singer performs on weekends. He's 18, two years younger than me. With a low, gravelly voice, he croons ballads, some of which he's written himself. We hang out a bit, kiss and stuff. Looks don't matter, it's the person inside that counts, I firmly, fanatically believe. Fred's voice rumbles, scratches, and makes my ears then my blood and spirit or something stand up, alert and alive. He's only 18, writing his own songs. He's gonna be famous. My blood and spirit or something dies when my fingers sink into the soft flesh that encases his voice though. I command them, stand up. They won't listen. I hate my body. They won't obey me. I get a second job at a barbecue chicken chain, lunches. The money is decent and steady, if not extravagant. The only problem is the stiff polyester uniform, a white shirt with puffy short sleeves and a matching red skirt with a sort of bib in front and back. What does Switzerland and chalets have to do with barbecue chicken? Liz and Rick from high school smile widely as they come to their table. How did they find me? Must have been for my mother. They're laughing at me, not in a mean way, but that's how I take it. 
embarrassed by my kitschy outfit and the down market nature of a Swiss chalet at lunch. Hi, I say, not smiling. By the end of their meal, Liz is regarding me angrily, and who could blame her, really? Last summer, we were still best friends, even if she was busying herself more and more with Rick, and this, I treat her like I barely know her. I haven't called since I got back from Birmingham. I haven't called anyone. I've cut everyone from high school off, even Ivan. I lose a job at the pizza parlor and get another at a blues bar carrying trays of beer and cocktails to people who listen to Willie Dixon, Junior Wells, and other semi-famous musicians. How old are you? I get asked that all the time. I don't believe you're old enough to work here. I hear that all the time. I smile weakly, a dollar ten, please. The bartender is a brassy, older blonde with huge breasts. My boyfriend's a stripper, she says proudly, motioning to a picture behind the bar. She looks at me tenderly, like my landlady, except the bartender's gaze ends with a chipped brusqueness. A guy starts coming into the club late. He sits at the bar and orders rye and cokes one after the other until closing time. I think he's attractive, if older. He's got dark circles under his eyes. He's sad. Good. I begin getting phone calls at home. I want to fuck you, a male voice says. I will fuck you so hard, I'll... I slam the phone down. A Camaro appears parked outside my house. My landlady goes outside and it leaves with a squeal of tires. She calls the police. I've decorated my apartment. I moved the beige armchair so that one arm makes full contact with the wall. I put the standing lamp directly in front of it so that if you sit in the chair, your feet are only a few inches from the base of the lamp. I put my teddy bear on the floor with his arm against the wall also, facing away from the chair and lamp a few feet in front of the lamp. I set the kitchen table at an angle and have moved all the chairs away from it, positioning them so they all face away from each other in the table. Tonight, it's the voices and light. I've been hearing voices for about two years now, usually at night, but I always push them out of my mind by focusing on other things. Ghosts exist, I believe, but I have enough trouble in this world. I don't need to get involved with another. The light is bright spots. No, splotches that dart around, sometimes trying to hit me. The voices don't scare me, but the light does. Fuck it, I think, as the voices burble and the light careens and spits from the corners of my bedroom. What is it you want to tell me, ghosts? Go ahead and kill me, light. I relax. The voices come into focus. Well, one does. Layered, berating me. Don't talk back to me. Why aren't the dishes done? Those beds haven't been vacuumed underneath. I smile widely. It's my mom. The light dive bombs my head, passes through and fades. I never hear those voices or see that light again. I leave the blues bar for a racetrack where I serve burgers and beers to old guys in an outdoor cafe at the top of the stands. It's harder to get to than the blues bar, but there was a seediness and desperation there. I think someone gave my phone number out. I think they thought they were being nice. The racetrack is outside the city and buses stop before it closes so one of my co-workers gives me rides home. We speed down the highway listening to her favorite singer, Lionel Richie. She sings along quietly. Hello, is it me you're looking for? I watch the lights go by and hurt. <laughs>